I didn't record. Um, since we have a new new participants on this month's webinar, I want to introduce you quickly to Diversity Works. We're a women-owned and women-run company uh, that evaluates organizations' DEI performance using a rigorous data-driven approach. We believe that effective DEI strategies are grounded in business drivers and that there are many ways that organizations can demonstrate their commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. And this matrix summarizes how we think about um, DEI performance. And what you may notice is that some of the more typical topics for diversity and equity and inclusion sit in this internal category. Um, but, but we really believe that it's the interdependency of these three pieces and the focus on all of them that allow an organization uh, to build a plan that will uh, create long-term sustainable change. Uh, we talk about um, projects versus plans, and a lot of people have different projects, but they don't have a strategic plan, and that's really where we can step in and help. So what does that have to do with workplace celebrations? Well, let me tell you. Workplace celebrations are a fundamental part of any um, diversity strategy. And where do they sit in this framework? Well, we believe the first thing is vision and values, right? Uh, if you don't know what you value, how do you know what to celebrate? In, in the internal category, we could look to employee engagement by recognizing what your employees value and, and celebrating those shared values, you can improve engagement. And last but not least, in the external marketing and public relations, when you know what you value, um, you can communicate and share those values externally through social media, through advertising, uh, by recognizing the celebrations that you wanna share. So um, today's discussion is really going to be about why you should be intentional with your um, with your workplace uh, celebrations, that there's real value and merit in that. And um, a lot of people uh, maybe don't think of it as something strategic, but I think you'll find that Elizabeth does make the case that it's really important. Um, and by the way, we will be sharing our uh, diversity calendar for 2022 to all the participants on this call today. Um, but if you know someone that would like a copy, uh, feel free to shoot me a note and uh, we'll get it to them as well. So our speaker today is Elizabeth Kerwin. Say hello, Elizabeth. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining. I think you're muted. Um, she is uh, my business partner and co-founder of Diversity Works. Uh, she is one of the best strategic thinkers and communicators I've ever worked with and I've worked with a lot of smart people. Um, she, uh, she, on this page, rather amusingly, offers um, the, uh, an example of the type of celebration that she loves, uh, which is acknowledging her coworkers, and then also um, pointing out that sometimes the shared celebration of birthday cake um, is not her, her favorite option. Uh, I do not suffer from a lack of sweet tooth. So, um, you know, we balance each other out in that respect. Uh, anyway, I'm going to turn it over to Elizabeth at this point to get things going. And again, welcome. And if you have any questions, use the chat feature or raise your hand. And we'll address them um, either uh, during the presentation or after, but, but we'd love to hear your thoughts and, you know, if you just want to share your favorite holiday in the chat, that would be fun too. Okay. I feel like I need to explain the, the birthday cake thing a little bit. I, I worked at an office where the, um, the office manager loved this particular type of, uh, of birthday cake and always ordered it for everybody's birthday. Um, and, and, but they never asked if the person whose birthday it was actually wanted birthday cake. So I'd have to sit there in a conference room with this sickly sweet birthday cake and, um, and you know, <laughs> pretend to be enjoying it when it really isn't what I wanted for my birthday. So, you know, it's natural to celebrate. We're human beings and it's, it's hardwired into who we are and, and how we operate. And workplaces are essentially human places or places where people are gathered for a specific purpose, but that doesn't you know, take our human, humanity out of it. Um, so we really, you know, the reasons that we celebrate you know, with our families and in the workplace are very, very similar. It's to, to form meaningful connections with each other. It's to, to share joy, like 
Holly and Denise and I do on a regular basis and create that culture that you um, that, that makes you successful. Uh, you know, more specifically, we celebrate to acknowledge beginnings, uh, milestones, and endings. So it's just part of a process that we we go through, and it's a way to to really take stock of accomplishments and you know to recognize hard work well done and and where we uh, um, you know advancing the ball. So we want to start things off with a quick poll. Um, so I think Holly's going to load on a, a, a Zoom poll here for us. And what we want to know is um, uh, to get a sense for what you all are currently celebrating at work. So just take a, a, a couple of seconds here to, uh, to respond to this quick poll. All right, well, mainstream holidays for the win there. Um, so folks are celebrating Christmas, Thanksgiving, 4th of July, et cetera, uh, in, in the workplace followed by wins and successes. That's great. I think that's really important for building a strong culture and you know, making people excited about coming to work. Um, and then birthdays and then less on uh, internet celebration. So you all aren't uh, big fans of talk like a pirate day, but that's okay. You know, we'll, take care of that for you over here at Diversity Works. Um, and then, you know, uh, Hallmark holidays and then other less mainstream holidays following up. So that's great. Thank you so much for, for uh, responding to the poll. I think that, um, you know, it's really instructive as we go through the rest of this, uh, of this conversation. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is what, what we actually celebrate. And Holly, if you can advance um, to slide eight, please. Um, so I think it's really you know, instructive to kind of take a step back and reflect on the fact that what we celebrate as a culture, as, as individuals changes over time. And there's nothing static about, about you know, what we currently celebrate. Um, before Lincoln's time, Thanksgiving and Christmas in the U.S. were really regional holidays. Uh, Thanksgiving was celebrated primarily in the Northeast and in, in New England. It was, uh, you know, the Puritans brought that from, uh, from England. And they didn't celebrate Christmas because they had a different relationship in terms of their uh, religious identity. Uh, Christmas was really a, a Southern celebration. It was uh, uh, what you know, it was primarily celebrated in, in Virginia and the South. And uh, you know, it, the reason that we celebrate Thanksgiving and Christmas as a nation now is really in large part due to, to Abraham Lincoln, who uh, responded to the crisis of the Civil War by redefining these regional celebrations as something not about sectional identity, but really about the inclusive spirit of American democracy. So Thanksgiving became a, a national holiday in 1862, um, you know, in the middle of the Civil War. Um, but before then, you know, people in the Northeast didn't celebrate Christmas and people in the South didn't celebrate Thanksgiving. So, you know, that's not so far back in terms of human history uh, that, uh, you know, the, that these uh, were very much regional celebrations. Uh, next slide. Um, you know, there's 8 billion people on earth, and that means there's just, you know, probably 8 billion different ways to, to celebrate things. Um, and when you look at which celebrations have the most global participants, that is, you know, most people around the globe recognizing and participating in these celebrations, uh, New Year's Day is by far the, the one that's most universal. Um, almost everybody around the world uh, takes stock on January 1 and, um, and, uh, and celebrates the new year. Uh, following that is the Lunar New Year, um, often referred to as Chinese New Year or um, Spring Festival. And you know, there's over a billion people in China who are celebrating this, but also it's really important to a lot of different cultures around the world. 
Um, Ramadan is a huge global celebration, not one that we normally recognize in the US, but there are almost 2 billion uh, Muslims around the world who celebrate Ramadan. And so that's a really important one. And then Christmas and Boxing Day, if you're you know, part of the former British Empire, but not the US, um, are also really important global holidays. So, you know, I think that, um, you know, it's always worth taking a moment to think about, you know, what, what other people around the world celebrate because, you know, we tend to, to kind of live in our bubble and, um, and, you know, what's important to us is not necessarily what, uh, what the rest of the world is uh, celebrating. Um, so let's drill down a little bit on what uh, Americans actually celebrate, what we celebrate in the US. And the holiday that has the most uh, participation by Americans is actually Thanksgiving with a you know, about 81% of, uh, of Americans celebrating Thanksgiving, followed by Christmas, which is you know, hugely, hugely popular in this country at 77%. Um, I put this, uh, this quote, uh, this tweet from Ted Cruz up just to you know, note that you know, he's, he's kind of saying that 11.5% of Americans not planning to buy Christmas gifts is somehow bad but actually 23% of Americans don't celebrate Christmas. So I think you could flip that around and say that, uh, you know, there are quite a few Americans who don't celebrate Christmas who are actually out there buying Christmas gifts for, for folks. So, you know, just a good reminder that um, just because something is really important to us personally does not mean that it's important to, um, you know, the people we work with or the people in our communities or, you know, people on the other side of the country. So yeah, this is just the you know, the top five in terms of what Americans celebrate. The, the Statista list has you know everything else fleshed out as well. Um, so let's talk a little bit about choosing workplace celebrations and and you know what do we choose to celebrate in our own workplace and we have another poll. Um, so we wanna know how many of you solicit the input of employees when you're thinking about what to celebrate in the workplace. So Holly has launched the poll there. Let's give you a couple of seconds to, uh, to respond if you get employee input about workplace celebrations. How are we doing, Holly? Uh, we're good. Give it another second or two. All right. All right. Looks like all we're going to get. So let's okay. get the results. We got a. All right. We're split. <laughs> yeah. Some yes, some no, and some don't know. That is actually pretty, uh, pretty evenly mixed there. Um, so when you're deciding what to celebrate at work, uh, there's a few things to keep in mind. Um, you know, celebrations should really reflect your culture as an organization, and that is influenced by a number of different things. First of all, where you operate. So if you're, you know, a, a small organization with just, you know, one location, then, you know, you're pretty familiar with that place. But if you're a larger organization and you have, overseas uh, employees and operations, or even in a lot of different regions of the United States, you might wanna consider what's important to those different places. So, you know, headquarters uh, obviously uh, defines a lot about what, um, you know, what the culture is, but it's really important to keep in mind that, you know, if, if you've got employees in a lot of different places, it's good to know what, uh, what's important to them. Um, it's also important to keep in mind what's important to you as an organization. So these internal celebrations are, are something else that help define your culture. If you have a Founders Day, for example, or you know, some other celebration that is really part of, of your identity, then that's something to, uh, to keep in mind for uh, deciding what to celebrate. Um, it's also great to be thinking about diversity, equity, and inclusion in terms of, of what you celebrate. So, you know, the, 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 the diversity of your own employee base can help you decide what it is that, that's important to, um, to celebrate as an organization. 
And then finally, you know, we really do think it's important to ask employees what they want. I'll go back to the, you know, the birthday cake example for just a minute. Um, you know, I, uh, you know, I, I personally did not want the birthday cake, but I also, as an introvert, was not comfortable going to the office manager and saying, hey, can we do something different for my birthday this year? I would rather have, you know, a big bowl of salty treats on the on the table to celebrate my birthday. Um, but if somebody had sent me a survey, I absolutely would have answered and said, I don't want the birthday cake. I want something else. So, you know, asking people what they want in a in a form that feels safe, that that they feel like they can actually express their their honest opinions is really, really important to uh, deciding what to celebrate. Um, we've put on the next slide a couple of you know, things that you might ask employees, uh, some sample survey questions that um, can help you kind of you know, figure out what, what is important to your employees and, um, and, and you know, what, what they actually want. So you can ask them, you know, it, is your team celebrating enough? Is it, you know, not enough? Is it too much? Um, you know, does your current schedule allow you to observe your religious beliefs? This is something where people probably are less comfortable coming forward and saying, hey, I really would like to have this day off instead of this day because it's important to my, um, to my identity. And, um, you, know, you know, they might not even be comfortable asking for those days off. So a survey really helps you get beyond those, um, those limitations. Um, you, you might ask people if they see uh, if they feel welcomed in this culture it, based on their own cultural um, identity or their racial or gender identity. Um, it, you know, and if you find that they're not, then celebrations are a way to make the workplace more welcoming for folks who might otherwise feel isolated or disconnected. Um, you know, I think that not every workplace has the flexibility to say, okay, you can trade this day for another day, but it's always worth asking if there are days off that people would rather have than the ones that are offered to them. And if there's a way to accommodate that, that's a, you know, another way to build um, inclusiveness and, and make the workplace more welcoming. And then, you know, ask people what they would that what would help them feel more connected to their colleagues? Like maybe there are folks who really want to um, understand other cultures and, and give them an opportunity to share what they bring. And you, know, you don't know the answers to these questions unless you ask. So we really do recommend that you um, take, a, take the time to ask employees what they, what they actually want, what they value, and what, uh, um, what's gonna help them feel more uh, connected to the workplace. In terms of identifying opportunities to celebrate, um, you know, we only know what we know, right? We don't know what we don't know. So we've got to go out and look and find things that uh, are going to help us, uh, you know, have a more inclusive celebratory culture at work. Um, you know, my, my go-to is always Google. If you don't know, you ask the Google machine or whatever your favorite search engine is. Um, the United Nations has a really, really good observances list that, um, it, you know, in terms of what's kind of recognized uh, globally, this, these are things um, that have to do with largely with marginalized communities. So there's a lot of uh, uh, observances that are focused on um, people with disabilities, with refugee populations, with uh, fighting racism and uh, gender equity. So that, that list is a really you know, helpful list in terms of knowing what has kind of that official sanction and, um, and even you know, resources that go with it. So for example, a lot of the UN observances, they'll have toolkits that you can use that will have all sorts of goodies in it, you know, images and, and social media things that you can use as part of your celebrations. Um, local news day books are a really good source for knowing what's going on in your community and what your community is celebrating. So that's another place to look. Um, industry trade publications also tend to have those sorts of things. So if there are uh, celebrations that are specific to the industry that you're in, that would be a place to look. And then there's you know a million and one social media holiday lists out there, and that's going to be your you know national puppy day and your you know bring your dog to work day and, and things like that. And it's that's always a good idea to kind of 
eyeball those to see if there's anything that really does resonate with your employees and, and what you know is important to them um, or, or things that really fit well with your culture and are good ways to reinforce and, and uh, strengthen that, uh, that organizational culture. Um, next slide has a, a plethora of questions that might help you guide planning. Um, so as you're thinking about what to celebrate in the workplace, um, you know, it's important to know what's, what's important to your leaders, to your employees, and also to your customers and external, um, other external stakeholders. So you, know, you want to be you know, speaking in a language that, that resonates with, with all of those important audiences. And then there's the more basic stuff, you know, who's in charge of this? Do they have a budget? What planning tools are at their uh, disposal? And, you know, a little bit more granular than what are your um, celebration policies? Like, are there, you know, are you going to allow people to switch holidays for another if they're offered one day off, but they'd rather have another day off? Um, are you going to, you know, give people overtime for working on certain holidays? Um, or can they take unpaid leave if they would like to take time off to, to celebrate, uh, um, you know, for something that's important to them. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of different things to keep in mind as you're, as you're planning your workplace celebrations. Um, you know, this isn't necessarily an exhaustive list, but it's one to get you started and thinking. Um, so let's focus on DEI specific celebrations. Um, yeah, this is a quote that we just grabbed off the internet um, uh, in, an, you know, in an article about uh, celebrating diversity at work. And you know, it really is about how do you create culture that allows people to come to work as their authentic selves, feel safe, and not feel anxious if they are you know, asking for something that's important to them personally in terms of uh, um, their, their identity. Uh, we have put together a calendar of um, diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, related events for the year. This is just what uh, is in Q1, and this is what we'll be sending out to participants after, um, after this conversation. But you can see that on a monthly basis, there are all sorts of things that you can celebrate as uh, an employer that may be important to some component of your um, workforce, or maybe it's something that you really want to, to highlight. So, you know, these, uh, these celebrations that we've selected really do have a very specific DEI focus. Um, and we, you know, we, so this is not an exhaustive list. This is really, you know, opportunities that help you communicate about uh, DEI in 2022. Um, because I'm a communicator at heart, I approach every problem as a, a communications problem and use the tools that, uh, that I've been using for years to help solve it. So you know, if, you're, if you're responsible for um, communicating about your, your DEI celebrations as an organization, I think it's really helpful to develop a, an editorial calendar or, or, uh, or something similar to help you kind of you know, track what's coming up, know how you're going to communicate about it and you know, who's responsible, what the deadlines are. I mean, there's a lot of more detail that you can put into this calendar as needed. This is really the most basic um, approach to it, but this is a sample for January. So say in January, you know you want to recognize New Year's Day, um, Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday, and you know, I made this up, the Founders Day on the 30th. So you can see, you know, that's a celebration every couple of weeks, and there's all these different ways that you can talk about it. Um, you might not use uh, all of these channels for everything that you want to celebrate, um, and maybe, you know, there's a, uh, you know, that internal celebration uh, is, is something else that you might layer on to this. And Elizabeth, can you talk a little bit about how this content might overlap in these different channels? Yeah, so, you know, one thing that is, um, you know, that I've always been a proponent of in terms of communications is recycling. And uh, it's just a more efficient way of doing something. So once you've decided what your New Year's Day message is, so, you know, 
we're celebrating a, a new year. We're making these resolutions to hold ourselves accountable to our DEI um, commitments. You know, that might be something that you are, are uh, communicating as, a, as an employer. Then you can adapt that to be, you know, to fit with each of these different channels. So if you're on Twitter and LinkedIn, then you know you just kind of adapt that larger message for um, for those specific channels. Uh, you know, I think that uh, you don't have to kind of craft a new message for for every place that you communicate. You want to keep in mind who's reading it and and where that uh, where that particular channel goes, but you can use the same message throughout. Elizabeth. Yep. Uh, also, I think what you are also saying in the beginning is that to make sure that there's no confirmation bias when it comes to the calendar of events, whereas the tendency to take someone's reality is what it is. And I, I believe when uh, Holly showed up the, the survey, what the instruments that were saying that make sure that you have a survey that you do go around and talk to people and ask them what it is that they want versus just right. the, the birthday cake that you talk about. Right. I think the other thing here to keep in mind is that this all doesn't have to fall on, on one person or even one team. Like if you are you know, really being as inclusive as possible, then, you know, then you don't have to kind of develop the message for everything. You can, you know, get some input from uh, across the organization. These are just a couple of examples of what external communications look like around celebrating um, diversity. So we've got, you know, a couple of uh, advertisements from on different platforms that uh, that that celebrate diversity in a way that's very um, cohesive with the brand identity of these of these companies. So, you know, I love this uh, happy Diwali uh, uh, ad from Sensodyne, um, which obviously makes products that are around tooth sensitivity and they figured out a way to connect the, uh, you know, the, the Diwali uh, traditions with their own message. So from, uh, you know, for, for external audiences, you want to be on brand, right? You want to have everything really emphasizing who you are and, and what, you, what you create or what you sell, um, but also acknowledging that there's a, um, uh, that you're, you're that you're celebrating it, something that's important to your customers. Uh, here are a few examples of internal communications or more internally focused communications that celebrate diversity. So um, the Franklin Templeton was an investment uh, firm, and they had a internal conversation around um, caring for loved ones who, who live with a disability. And what they did was they took that. Uh, took that conversation and then pulled out some of the stories that emerged from it and featured it in, um, in, in the series of ads that, you know, talk about the importance of, uh, um, you know, what it means to be caring for somebody with a disability. In the, in the upper right hand corner, uh, so one of our clients, AMS uh, Fulfillment has a you know, very robust blog and their holiday blog, they used it to feature five holiday traditions that are, um, uh, that, that represent their diverse US culture. So their blog talks about Christmas, Kwanzaa, Las Posadas, Hanukkah, and Solstice. So, you know, they have really thought about, you know, what is important to our employees and are communicating that uh, back out to employees. Um, the, the Flex series down here at the bottom was a, a series that they did uh, celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month a few months ago, and it highlights the uh, actual employees and talks about their, um, their experiences as Hispanic in the workplace. So, you know, this, these are just, you know, a few examples of, of what it looks like when you are communicating and so, about so celebrating diversity in your organization. Well, that is what I had. I think, um, you know, Holly, do you yeah. want to see if we have any questions queued up or, or do folks want to share some thoughts and ideas about how they celebrate uh, diversity in the workplace? Great. Um, EC, if you want to go ahead and unmute and ask your question, that'd be great. Hi, thank you for that. My name is AJ. Um, 
that's a Turkish name, but that's the pronunciation. <laughs> Uh, diver the diversity here in action, but um, I just wanted to point out something. I worked. I work at um, National Waste and Recycling Association as their DEI and Education Programs Manager, and this is a very niche, very uh, special kind of um, industry. So it will be a bit different for us to create the right programs and um, create these celebrations for our employees. But what I wanted to point out here is that, have you ever considered maybe um, suggesting uh, different type of cultural events from around the globe that are more um, objective for everyone rather than the religious ones, like not the Muslim holidays, not Christian holidays, but I would say Oktoberfest, or I would say uh, something like Rio Carnival. Have you ever considered bringing those topics, those celebrations to the office? Not in the same form, of course, but maybe a very symbolic, small uh, celebration that uh, puts a smile on everyone's face. Yeah, thank you. That's a really good point. Absolutely. Um, you know, uh, celebrations don't need to be religiously based. I mean, in addition to the to Oktoberfest and others that you mentioned, you know, I, I think of, you know, Mardi Gras, which is such an important part of um, of different cultures. That's that's fun. You know, you think about um, kind of our national holidays, Fourth of July and 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 things like that. There are corollaries for, you know, in, in different countries. Um, you know, the Canadians celebrate Thanksgiving a little differently than we do in America. And if you've got Canadian colleagues and recognizing and celebrating uh, Canadian Thanksgiving, I think is really important. Um, so I, you know, I think that uh, uh, again, it, it kind of it goes back to asking employees what's important to them and, and really kind of looking for those opportunities to let employees talk about their culture and express their culture and celebrate their culture in the workplace in a way that uh, that 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 you know works for your workplace thanks for that I, comment question yeah yeah i just want a quick note on that one i definitely agree that those surveys on um their cultural events could work especially when you don't really know every other event around the uh, world, but if there is not enough diversity in the workplace, I think a little bit of research uh, from the diversity manager here uh, could also work a lot to find out those interesting, intriguing um, events and yep. just like bring it to the workplace. Absolutely. Absolutely. Think, thank um, you for that. Thank you so much. And thank, thank you for you. joining us today. I think Queenie thank has a so question much. for a contribution. Well, I've been on the phone because I was in the car, so I wasn't going to talk and drive and run off the road. But. Oh, I see. <laughs> um, um, Jeannie is on our advisory committee, and she um, was vice president of three of Johns Hopkins hospitals. So, Queenie, I'd love to hear your perspective on workplace celebrations, and maybe you could share your experience from Johns Hopkins. Sure. So um, <clears throat> thank you all, um, and I, I have been listening. I was on at 106, and I heard about your birthday cake, Elizabeth, and I'm sorry okay. about that. <laughs> um, <laughs> diversity and inclusion is very, um, it's uh, pretty, pretty near and dear to me. And as um, Holly said, I oversaw three HR uh, departments for uh, Johns Hopkins, and we had a corporate um, we had a corporate department and then each hospital had um, diversity inclusion committees. And so I chaired three of the committees and we asked for people to volunteer to join the committee. And, um, and it, was, it was so easy breezy, as I say, it was, I had at least 50 people at each hospital wishing to be a part of something great that you know we started about 10 years ago. Um, so we set up ERGs, and one of the ERGs was to look at celebrations and how we wanted to celebrate in the workplace, as you said earlier, Elizabeth. And um, and so those, just like I think EC said earlier, think of things outside of like the religious cultural divert, uh, celebrations. We celebrated things like Flag Day, um, and uh, we did things during work and we did things after work. Um, we had a budget, each hospital had a budget for diversity and inclusion. 
every year because we had so many initiatives that we wanted to work on. My budget grew larger and larger, which was great because as the hospital's budget went smaller and smaller, they viewed that was something very important for us to continue on with. Um, for the departments that I oversaw, we talked about at the beginning of the year, every January, what did we want to celebrate as a group? And similar to what you were doing today in terms of a survey, um, I asked people if they were comfortable talking about whether or not they wanted to celebrate different holidays or not. Um, and, uh, and if not, and if they weren't comfortable, of course we could do a survey, but everyone was comfortable. And um, everyone except one person in this one hospital I'm thinking about celebrated Christmas except this one young lady. And so she said, if you don't mind, can I talk to you offline about what I'd like to do to celebrate? And I said, absolutely. So we talked about the fact that she wanted that day, a particular day off in lieu of the 25th. Um, and that was fine because I could rearrange things in my department. She uh, didn't want to celebrate when the members had a Christmas party. She asked if she could be the first per the person at the front of the office answering the phones. And I said, great. But um, we would always take her a plate of food and she enjoyed that. But then I thought, now, how can I celebrate everyone in the department and not tie it to a holiday or something uh, or, you know, something of, you know, Christmas nature? So what I started doing was a thank you dinner. And at the end of the year, I invited everybody in my department and some of the people who volunteer for my department. And I would select a restaurant and I would we we had cocktails. It was after work. We had cocktails, appetizers, um, and we, everybody came and we had a grand old time. And that was how I was able to. I love that. Get mm -hmm. away, not get away, but separate the holidays and celebrate everyone for all of their hard work. And I gave them a, you know, I wrote a handwritten card to everyone and gave, passed them out for dinner at dinner. So that was just a couple of things that I, I did. Love that. And, you know, one of the unique things about, well, not unique, but certainly uh, true about hospitals is that they're 24 seven operations, right? And so um, can you talk a little bit about uh, policies about um, asking for time off on your regular shift schedule and how hospitals or Johns Hopkins may have managed that? Um, yeah, sure. So it was de uh, department wide. So if you wanted time off, you would uh, put in a slip, we call it a leave slip. And that leave slip then went to your department manager. And he or she, depending on how that department was arranged, a lot of clinical floors would say, before you put in your leave slip and talk to me, go to your colleague and see if they'll switch with you. So if you have a buddy system at work, right? Gallup says, I have a best friend at work. So if you had that best friend at work, you would go to that best friend and say, I really want this day off and this time. And I know you, you know, we've talked about you wanting to take time off to be with your family. Do you think we could switch? And that works really well on the clinical floors. And then the two of them would present their leave slips to the manager. The manager would sign off on them. And then uh, update the calendar. So most clinical floors do self-scheduling. Um, if it was a department like I've had a static department, you know, eight to four thirty. Yeah. Um, if someone wanted off, it wasn't a problem. If if they had interviews that day, they would go to their colleague and say, you know, can you take over these four or five interviews for me that day, or divide them up with the team. I would even jump in and say, I'll interview because you know I don't get to do it anymore. So. Yeah. It was kind of fun for me to get involved as well. Um, so. does, and does anybody else have any questions for us or for Queenie or for Denise? Um, otherwise, I'll ask Queenie one more question. Um, the, but in terms of seniority, so when you think about equity and time off, right, and you've got these 24-7 uh, schedules and you've got 12 nurses in a unit and they all want Christmas day off, um, how does how does a hospital that has to have a certain level of staff on hand 
case yeah. of premium pay or, um, you know, a comp day, that sort of thing, and just some of the HR uh, bag of tricks. Mm-hmm. So, so at the beginning of the year, um, everyone knows the holidays you get. And somebody just, uh, Paul just talked about a floating holiday. I never got to be able to establish that, Paul, before I left. (laughs) But um, I think that I love that idea of a floating holiday. Um, So train of thought, Queenie. Um, Okay, so like there was maybe 15 holidays. And I'm exaggerating because I think there was more about eight or nine. And so um, they would go back to the previous year's schedule. And if you had to work that year and you were still working at the facility, you would get that that holiday off. Mm -hmm. And if you were new, the newest people had to take the holiday that was first. Actually, sorry, that was premiere, right? So New Year's Eve, and this is kind of funny, Halloween is a (laughs) premiere holiday in healthcare. Um, And Christmas Day is a premiere and um, Mother's Day. And that's important for, um, you know, of course, 90% of the workers in healthcare are female. So if you had that day off before, then they would work it into the schedule. But if you really, really, really needed it to do something, or, you know, your family was going to go on vacation, and you had it off last year, you then have to go around and ask each of your colleagues <laughs> if they would take the day for you and you would get premium pay. So there are delineations of what holidays are premium pay and premium pay. I'm sure everybody knows is time and a half, um, including Halloween. <laughs> um, and, um, and then some of the, uh, the lesser quote unquote holidays, like the day after Thanksgiving were just a regular pay. So it was your day off and you would use your uh, leave to get paid for that because it wasn't a real holiday. It wasn't an observed holiday, but it was, it was always a schedule that they would go back to the previous year and look to see who was able to get off. And um, I've spoken before about it. The retention prior to 2020 in healthcare was great where I work. Mm -hmm. Uh, My three hospitals, we were in the 90th percentile in keeping retention rates now, not so much because of COVID, yeah. but um, so it was easy to go back and say, oh, Holly, you had, you had December 25th off last year, yeah. so I, I need to put you on this for, this year. <laughs> well, this, thank you so much, Queenie, and um, thank you, everybody, for attending. Uh, you know, if anybody has uh, any more questions, please raise your hand right now, uh, but I think we'd just like to wrap up and, and say that the point we're trying to make is be intentional. Sometimes workplace celebrations may seem um, incidental or um, obvious, and we just want you to take stock and revisit that notion and apply some rigor and structure to your internal, external um, celebrations and understand how they can really uh, improve the culture and the level of engagement of your team. Uh, Any final remarks, Elizabeth? No, thanks. Thanks everybody for uh, attending. You know, we'd love to hear your feedback on this and we'd love to hear your ideas for other topics that we might uh, discuss in this, uh, in this forum. So I know um, Holly's got to uh, uh, tell us a little bit about what we have lined up for 2022, but um, in the, you know, in the spirit of, uh, you know, being inclusive and asking what people want, um, please let us know if there's something that you would like us to talk about. I just want to say if one thing real quick is that uh, we just want you to make sure that you're seeking to learn about, as everyone has said, different holidays or what's important to the team or your group. Seek feedback and embrace the differences. Yeah. Thank you, Denise. Mm-hmm. Um, well, thank you. So we, like I said, we host this um, DEI Leaders Network call every Thursday, uh, the third Thursday, not every Thursday, every third Thursday of the month. And we've got an exciting um, set of sessions outlined. We're in the process of confirming uh, the, the different experts that we're gonna ask to join us on the call. Um, so keep an eye out for that. We'll send you a list uh, when we follow up to this uh, webinar with your calendar. We'll send you some of the topics that we plan to cover in 2022. And obviously 
If you're interested in engaging Diversity Works uh, to conduct one of our 360 degree assessments, which follows that framework that we showed you, we'd love to work with you as well. Um, my email address is holly at diversityworks.net. And um, the great thing is when I email you following this call, all you have to do is respond. You don't have to type the whole thing in. And you can also just be glad I didn't include my last name, Wittenberg, um, which gets misspelled more often than not. So anyway, on that note, um, happy holidays, uh, happy uh, Hanukkah, Christmas, Kwanzaa, Solstice, um, Las Posadas, all of them <laughs> to you. Um, and like I said, if you were shy to ask a question online, feel free to uh, shoot us an email and we'll get back to you. Take care, everybody. Thanks. Thanks so much, everyone. Great deal. Hi, Queen.